that you guys all had a very beautiful week. Now our guest today is known for her very beautiful and empowering poetry and she has been featured on radios, TV and a bunch of other events as well. So we are really proud and honored to have her here despite her schedule. So ladies and gentlemen, please help me in welcoming Sherry Dougal. Thank you so much for having me. It's an absolute pleasure to finally see you in person. You too. Thank you. Yeah. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I just finished teaching my psychology AP class. So oh, That's awesome. I'm yeah. taking psychology in school right now too. Oh, that's yeah. great. I think everyone should take a psychology course. Yeah. Absolutely. So I know that you are a naturopathic doctor who is now focusing on her creative side. Absolutely. So how does this work? Are there specific things that you change when you're doing your practice? Well, I've been performing my whole life pretty much. It started with dance. Ooh. So a performance is a big part of my life and the mind-body connection automatically is linked to that. I have a vested interest in expressive arts therapy and uh, just linking the two together has been a very fascinating journey for me. That's awesome. Speaking of the uh, expressive arts, I know that you like to link uh, visualization with your stuff. So how does that work? Like what can we expect from a session with you? Well, visualization is basically closing your eyes and imagining. It's using all your senses and that's pretty much what writing and acting is pretty much about. Yeah. It's basically just getting into yourself, allowing yourself to feel and just opening up your senses and keeping them alive. Yeah. as an artist. It's very important. For sure. And I bet that's really relaxing too because I also like to write like stories and lyrics and stuff. And so for you, what are your favorite relaxation techniques and what do you think is the best way to relax? Oh wow. For me, just any creative process takes me into that meditative state, whether it's writing or movement or even just doing a scene when you're in the moment and when you're vulnerable with your scene partner, it's almost as though you're naked. You know, mm -hmm. just in the moment and just allowing, allowing yourself to be, that's just very relaxing for me. It doesn't even feel like work and that's why I feel blessed. Yeah, that's awesome. And you're really talented too. So that's another plus is that what you do, you're like awesome at it. Thank you, Ria. You're welcome. Appreciate that. So can you tell us more about what Reiki is and what the benefits are from it? A Reiki is a basically an, an energetic form of medicine. Uh, we're all energy. So it kind of taps into that idea that we are all energy. It uses the energy from the earth. Basically, it's non-invasive. Mm -hmm. You don't need to be part of any religion to experience the health benefits from it. And basically, you just lie down and I put my hands on whoever's needing the treatment. And it realigns all the energy centers in your body, all the chakras, and creates more flow in your body. And life is all about flow. Exactly. So can you say that Reiki has also been an influence in your poetry? That's a good question. I never thought of that. But I feel that it definitely has influenced me, not only in being yeah. able to tap into that meditative state, but being more understanding of others, yeah. helping me interact with others better in a social way and in a fun way. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I definitely agree with art. It definitely helps you to relax and kind of meditate as well and interact with people. I think that's what's so great about it is that it doesn't matter where you're from or what language you speak, in a way you're all connected. And that's why I'm so impressed with youth like you. Thank you. Because uh, I think having healthy outlets is very important uh -huh. in everyday life. Yeah. And being in front of the camera like you are, expressing yourself in the way you do also, Thanks. is not only like uh, healthy, but it's also very inspiring. Thank also. you. So. You too. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, Mutual admiration here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite thing to write about and what do you hope to achieve through your writing? I want my writing to create awareness. 
Mm -hmm. emotional awareness, spiritual awareness. My writing tends to be very reflective, <clears throat> um, just thought-provoking. Mm -hmm. I don't mean to be thought-provoking. I mean, I don't make that as a goal, but that's just naturally how I am as an individual. And I love looking at different writers, like Sufi poets have really inspired me. Mm -hmm. And also poets like Khalil Gibran, Paolo Coelho. Those who really think out of the box, those type of artists really have inspired me in taking shape in terms of my writing. And also my dance background yeah. gives a lot of movement and rhythm to my writing, especially in my spoken word uh, performances. That's awesome. Thank and you. what would you say is your basic style of poetry? My basic style is reflective. It's full of imagery. Imagery is a very good way to tap into your mind. Rhea. Yeah. I totally believe that and I think imagery is the key way to access your mind because sometimes I mean I'm a writer yeah but sometimes words get in the way yeah so using imagery it bypasses everything and goes into that primitive state of mind where you're just allowed to feel yeah yeah that's beautiful just like how we said earlier like finding positive and creative outlets yes I think that's really important to just like it's okay to feel certain things and just relax and let go. Speaking of your writing, since we're going on track, um, can you tell us more about your book, Beneath the Surface? Absolutely. Beneath the Surface is going to be first released in India this November. Ooh. In Mumbai, Maharashtra through Lead Start Publishing. And I'm looking forward to uh, meeting individuals there. That's and awesome. actually two celebrity musicians or singers are coming to my launch, which is very exciting. So cool. Anup Jalota and Talat Azishi will be attending. And after my local, I mean, after my abro launch abroad, I will do a local launch. And my book is basically about emotional awareness, mm -hmm. which is exactly what we were talking about. Yeah. How to tap into those emotions and not to be afraid of them. Yeah, for sure. It's all you as well. So there's no need to be afraid of who you are and what you're feeling. I guess some people are always concerned, like, should I be feeling sad? Am I, aren't I supposed to be happy all the time? But I think what they should know is that it's okay because everyone goes through it. And, and there's a lot of stigma, especially mm -hmm. about being depression, depression yeah. and sadness. <clears throat> but just allowing yourself to say, okay, you know what? It doesn't matter what anyone else thinks. This is how I'm feeling and allowing yourself to just express it. So do you have a little something that you can read to us from your book? Sure. Here's an excerpt from Beneath the Surface. Emotions plunge into my being like rocks thrown into water. They sink, creating ripples that move in all directions. My heart tries to pump smooth streams, but rocks obstruct and create more turbulence. Another rock splashes inside me. Ripples come and go, come and go. They emerge and disappear like waves on a seashore. More rocks dissolve as minerals seep through. They feed and sustain. I acknowledge each emotion and let go. Emotions are like thoughts. You can become a motorboat, allowing one thought to come after another. Or you can become a car that becomes stuck. It's wheels moving around and around and around. The same thoughts over and over again. There's more space around my thoughts. And that space is connected with awareness. That space, like the space between your fingers, is filled with silence. If you wiggle your fingers, you, you can wiggle your fingers to create sound, but it is the silence that teaches me things. It is the silence that helps me grow and move forward. Awesome, that's really deep and I think really eye-opening as well and I think that a lot of people can learn from your poetry for sure that like 
just take the time to breathe. I guess sometimes I get even stressed out about overthinking and stuff, but if you just take time to get to know yourself too. And meditation is a, a daily part of my ritual. Yeah. So yes, it's something I do every day. And I guess it just helped me tap into that headspace in terms of being able to write, yeah. being able to create and express that way. <laughs> well, I definitely think that it would be awesome as well for uh, those of us out there to get some, uh, some emotional uh, calmness or relaxation from your work. So where can we find you and uh, find some more of your work? Absolutely. You can find me on Facebook. I have a separate Facebook page under Sherry Dougal. You can follow me on Twitter. Fly with me at Twitter, Sherry Dougal, <coughs> Twitter.com. And uh, yeah, my website at Sherry Dougal. Dot wix dot ca. I'm sure you'll put it up on the yep. screen. And uh, yeah, my website, and there's many different ways to get hold of me. Awesome. So, yes. <laughs> All right, everybody. Well, this is definitely not the end of our episode yet, so stay tuned, keep watching. We'll be right back here on Every Thing. Words. Words formed by letters, like fetters that confine and restrain to one refrain that repeats like heartbeats, performing feats to overcome the hum of mingled voices of past choices that haunt and daunt like whispers that come and go, come and go in my mind as I rewind. The same refrain plays like an audio cassette full of regret as I rewind in my mind a phrase that repeats like heartbeats. Trying to let go with a desire to know the jumble of thoughts like knots that tumble out of mine, trying to weave them into a song so that I can belong. Always, I can hear the noise of forgotten childhood joys that repeats like heartbeats as I rewind in my mind to play back the same track of sound around and around to see my life on the screen like part of some routine. Photographs frozen in time mean my prime doing some sort of mime coming and going coming and going a tumultuous dance leading me into a trance the camera zooms in making my head spin with the same words the same refrain in my brain more pictures in front of my eyes leading to my demise they are full of empty spots as I try to connect the dots wanting it to be to be to be never satisfied with me always wanting to be free wanting consistency the flame inside wants to provide but it burns and yearns to the same refrain creating pain that repeats like heartbeats you can see the fire the desire shedding light in my plight the inner flame creates a name where I can proclaim how I feel, allowing me to heal, but the wind blows. <sighs> trying to oppose with prose, trying to expose the storm taking form with the same refrain that repeats and moves to the same beats of past defeats. I've cried inside, waiting for everything to subside, waiting for a guide that'll help me decide, but things seem out of reach as I halt to a screech. Mingled voices full of choices coming back to the same track, speaking of lack, shackles chain and continue to restrain, keeping me still as I try to fulfill my will. But I become paralyzed by the same refrain that repeats like heartbeats with bouts of doubts, with fears all these years full of tears that with time gone by, all has become dry. I'm ready for change and will arrange for the same flame to guide with pride to burn steady and strong despite what is right and wrong. My goal is to perform 
inform, transform, letting go of what others say, paving my own way, letting go of what others do, sticking to what is true as I create a new refrain that'll help me sustain my spirit so that it can shine with the divine. That was a really beautiful poem and like I can really relate to it and I almost got teary at at some point because oh. mental health is really personal and close to me as well so that's why I'm, it's one of my biggest advocacies right now too and uh, what inspired you to write thoughts? Well I was going through a lot and you know when you get into that negative cycle of thinking that's yeah. pretty much what this poem tries to capture and there's so much going on Peace starts with the self. Work on the self, and then you can create awareness and create not only inner, but outer peace, which is what we're all striving for. Mm -hmm. Just to live in peace, not only with yourself, but with all of those around us. So that's what my book is trying to portray. I'm truly an inspiration and I think that it really helps me as well to have you here too because like sometimes I hold things a lot in too and that's when you were reading the other poem earlier with the cars and the wheels going around and around. I just remember like days that I just always overthink and then yeah. I think it's really awesome to have you here too to inspire many of us out there that it's okay to open up about how you feel and it's okay to breathe as well. Yes, and it's okay to cry in front of the television. Yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> That's so true. Well, thank you for sharing that beautiful excerpt. Uh, that was absolutely amazing. Let's give her another round of applause. Thank you so much for having me. I really enjoyed it. It was a pleasure. Stay tuned. Keep watching. We'll be right back here on Every I Think. Okie dokie, so workshop time. I'm actually really nervous because you're such an awesome poet and I'm scared I'm oh, gonna I like know about that. choke halfway. <laughs> so this is called the Nature Speaks to Me Challenge and we have this little cup here with I think three or four different um, different little ideas. And so one of them is supposed to be uh, something involved with nature and then what the topic should be. So every single time that we get something, we have four lines each to make an impromptu poem out of it. Mm, sounds like a lot of fun. Okay. Stone slash rock, crush. Like crush, like your emotions are crushed or like, wow, that guy's really cute, crush. Oh, heart crush. Oh, do you want to start the first four lines? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I feel the rocks beneath me as I try to crush them, but the rocks stay solid, forming layers of layers around my being. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Can this be about a tree? Because I am stopped. <laughs> I'm stopped. Um, <laughs> My love is like my uh, countless pebbles. Beautiful. Count oh, that's one line. Darn. <laughs> I <have> three more. <laughs> I said I have three more, and I'm like, no. My love is like countless pebbles. Too many to count. Too many to count. In my heart. In my heart. In my soul. In my soul. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> A leaf, a beautiful baby. Oh! I hold a leaf in my hand, as delicate as skin itself, seeping through. Light, newness, beginnings, a newborn, a beautiful baby. Oh. Your turn. <laughs> I reach out and touch its leather gentle skin. As shiny and fresh as a dew drops on a leaf. And a baby's butt. <laughs> Cute! <laughs> Bark, unrequited love. My love is solid 
and hard, unrequited and pure. Oh, Dylan O'Brien, why don't you love me? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you. That's awesome. Um, I strip through layers and layers of bark, trying to search that one, search for that one love. Amir Khan, Mr. Bollywood actor, where are you? <laughs> Shout out to the celebrity crushes! <laughs> okay, last one, two. We will find you. We'll find my Amir Khan. Yeah. We will, one day. What about my Dylan? And your Dylan. Yay! <laughs> there you go. A twig missing your mother. Hi, Ooh. Mom. The longing for a mother's love is delicate like a twig that snaps and falls, holding you, giving you support as you fall to the earth. <laughs> I tried my best to be careful, not wanting to have you too close to snap but also not wanting to let go and lose you forever. Oh, that's really beautiful. Ria! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> okay, so this next challenge is uh, called To Be or Not To Be, and it's kind of Shakespeare themed, and we're gonna have, I think, the words or topics in this cut, and we have to try and make a poem or just kind of talk, I guess, and just take one turn each with uh, a word each, and we have to make it sound like it's old English and from the medieval <laughs> times. Fun. Ooh. Let's okay. do it. I'm nervous. Okay. Thorn. <laughs> oh, Aurora, why art thou sleeping? The thorn hath pricked me. <laughs> pricked me like a rose. The thorn stands in the middle of beauty. For why have you been struck by such hideousness? <laughs> the sharp prick, ow, hurteth me. Darn Maleficent. <laughs> <laughs> this cup with wine like a wine bear come to me drink <laughs> and, be and become drunk it become drunk I shall fill myself up with the love from your heart flowing <laughs> like pure nectar that flows right into this cup of the soul. Oh, Romeo, do not poison me, please. <laughs> this is the cup of love, my dear. You shall not get poisoned. <laughs> Thank you, my love. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Ooh, heaven. Okay. Hark, the herald angels sing. <laughs> From the heaven, hear the music of the ancient cosmos. The cosmic had called you <laughs> to say the next line. <laughs> How my eyes have set upon thou this moonlit hour for you look like the moon. <laughs> the nymph, a tree goddess that floats in the sky amidst the cloud. She floats and hovers above your heart. One last one. Ooh. 
Last one. Warrior. Warrior. My favorite. I come bearing my sword and will hit it. Anyone who comes in my way. Thou shalt not pass me in line at McDonald's. All I wanted was a thy burger. And do not cross me in the Dairy Queen. All I wanted was a strawberry sundae. Do you dare to challenge me in my $1.99 value meal? The challenge is on. <laughs> That was my favorite. <laughs> I think the closer we got to the end, the more, yeah. <laughs> the less because serious it got. Shakespeare's not easy. No, it's so. not. It was a fun one. When in doubt, Definitely. just add F to everything. Yes. <laughs> yes, F. Oh, gosh. Absolutely. All right, so before, oh before you go, we have our wall of fame here. Everybody thinks it'd be awesome, awesometh, if you could sign it. Awesometh. Thy starreth. I shall do my signature. For the progeny, for the future, I shall sign it, <laughs> my signature.